I can't believe the hoax, the sham, this absolute injustice, justice system, D.A. Bragg and the judge should be ashamed of themselves. This isn't just ridiculous. This actually erodes the confidence that Americans have in the justice system. They might have a spring today, but it's not going to last very long because what happened in New York is a travesty of justice. Everybody knows that you've been talking through the elements of what's occurred. I'm not going to go down the elements. You have a situation where the justice system is prosecuting and persecuting a chief political rival. No American wants that, especially when you look at the backdrop of how Joe Biden has been a complete disaster as president of the United States. I mean, they just elected Donald Trump president. So politically, I think it's good. I think, unfortunately, they've made a travesty, a mockery of our criminal justice system. I think all over the world right now, they're watching news reports and they're saying what America's turned into us, meaning these third world countries, these dictatorships, these crazy places. I mean, I don't know what I can add to what people have already seen. You literally have a judge that supported Joe Biden in 2020. He supported him. His daughter makes money off political campaigns on the far left. A jury pulled from one of the most liberal counties in America. A prosecutor that basically ran on the promise that I'm going to get Trump. I don't know what I'm going to get him on yet, but I'm going to get him on something. All right, guys. So in a follow-up on the historic day where the former president of the United States was found guilty in the hush money trial again i don't know exactly what he was found guilty of nobody knows what he was found guilty of nobody can really explain it um because it was rigged right uh in a follow-up we have to talk about some of the reactions to this okay because uh the mainstream liberal media although i wanted to avoid reacting to clips of the mainstream liberal media today because quite honestly i can't really stomach listening to them gloat over what is clearly in my opinion uh political persecution right something that is going to destroy this country if it continues to happen but this one clip from MSNBC, courtesy of Joy Reid, it just so happened to be Joy Reid that said this, um, is a clip that I must share because she's admitting out loud that the trial was rigged, right? This is what she says on MSNBC. I'm not sure if she realized that this is what she was saying, um, but this is what she said in a unhinged rant about black GOP leaders or so-called people of color in the GOP. You know she has to make it racial. Supporting Trump following the conviction and doing the trial um she basically admits in her rant that yeah it was rigged because if this trial didn't happen in new york then we would not have gotten this outcome i mean tim scott who obviously wants to be the vice president he posted a full minute video saying that alvin bragg is the only one who's guilty called the trial sham and a witch hunt the only verdict that matters is the one at the ballot box okay but you know rubio literally compared the trial to cuban show trials um no christy Nome called it a rigged trial ted cruz says this is a kangaroo court byron donalds this is election interference these enablers are what enable Trump to create his ecosystem, and they are incentivized to do that because either they want to be the vice president, they want to be in his good order, and because he is the leader of the Republican Party. This is the Republican Party. Now, I just have, I'm sorry, I, you, you said to, you've triggered me thoroughly. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to trigger. I'm just reading <laughs> quotes. <triggered. laughs> um, because Byron Donalds, who is from East Flatbush, Brooklyn, as myself, and Tim uh, Scott, who is from the great state of South Carolina, and Marco Rubio, who is Latino, they know damn well who normally ends up at the bottom of this criminal justice system. Who are the actual system. victims of a two-tiered system exactly. of justice, which he has co-opted yes. that term. They know exactly that what they're saying is not just factually incorrect, that in the state where Byron Donalds uh, is a congressman, his governor, Ron DeSantis has dog walked black voters for voting. They understand fully because they have lived in the bodies of black men, those two black men, and they're willing to sell themselves cheap, cheap. Not even Clarence Thomas will do that. At least he requires it to be expensive. For them, it can be absolutely dirt cheap, free. That's the cheapest it could be to sell your soul and the, and the 
the lives and memory of all of the black men and women and brown men and women who have suffered in a criminal justice system where they can't delay it, where the Supreme Court won't help them, where they won't have Samuel Alito fly an upside down flag for them, where they won't have any of the benefits that Donald Trump has used to kill every case but this one, including humiliating Fonnie Willis in Georgia to try to shame her out of prosecuting him. The good thing, uh, the one good thing that happened here is that this case was brought in a state that no Republican controls. Because if it did, the same thing that happened in Georgia would have happened here. Thank God for the state of New York, Donald Trump's home state, because there was no way for him to interfere with the process of justice. And in this rare instance, as somebody who's quite critical many times of the criminal justice system, the system actually worked the way it is supposed to work. Yeah. So here you have Joy Reid racializing a situation that honestly really isn't racial but she can't analyze anything without using race okay that is how narrow-minded she is when it comes to her commentary when it comes to her political analysis um you don't need to go to an ivy league school to get a degree in race hustling right i mean she could do that without a degree from an ivy league university but uh with that being said i find it fascinating how she's implying that because trump has the opportunity to appeal in certain states and to defend itself Okay, and to delay the trial and to make sure that everything is fair and just before going to trial because he has the ability to do that in some states, um, but not New York. He is experiencing some form of white privilege because he is taking advantage of what he legally and constitutionally can do in certain states, right? But if I recall correctly, we have Juicy Smollett, who is black and gay. He was able to basically do the same thing in Illinois when he was sentenced to 150 days in jail for committing a fake hate crime against himself. He only served six because all of the woke revolutionaries came out of woodwork and started boohoo whining and crying and saying, oh, you can't send a black gay man to jail, even though, I mean, it is really obvious that this man committed a fake hate crime against himself. At the very least, in that case, we know exactly what crime he committed. In the Trump case, the hush money case, we don't know what crime he committed, right? Nobody knows, okay? The jury doesn't know. No, nobody knows, okay, exactly what crime he committed. But this guy, because he's a celebrity, he only served six days, and he has been appealing his uh, verdict, and now he's about to appeal to the state Supreme Court. Wait, wait, wait. But according to Joy Reid, that never happens for so-called people of color, but you have this black gay man that's able to stay out of jail because he's taking advantage of what the system allows him to do. But nobody is complaining about that, right? Everybody just agrees that, okay, well, hey, he's allowed to do this. He's allowed to appeal and he doesn't have to go to jail while he's appealing. So, you know, it is what it is, right? He's essentially delaying justice. That, that's what he's doing. But again, when people like him do it, oh, crickets, right? These people aren't complaining about him taking advantage of the legal system, okay? But when Trump exercises his rights to make sure that a trial would be conducted fairly, which he didn't get the opportunity to do in New York, um, oh, well, it's a problem. Which, again, brings me to this point that Joy Reid is making. I'm not sure if she understands or understood at the time in which she was formulating her thoughts that, hey, this doesn't really make sense because basically what you're saying is that, well, it's not rigged against Trump. This is what she's arguing, but it is rigged against Trump because had this trial happened in any other state, like a red state, then they would not have gotten this outcome. She said that the same thing would have happened that happened to Fonnie Willis in Georgia. Well, what happened to Fonnie Willis in Georgia? Well, Fonnie Willis almost got pulled off the case. Why? Because there is a conflict of interest, a.k.a. Hey, there is reason to believe, strong reason to believe that this trial is not fair. OK, what is Trump doing with the classified documents case down there in Florida? Well, he's going through every process that he can in order to make sure that the trial is fair before it starts, including trying to get the trial and the case dismissed altogether based off whatever legal grounds possible. Again, this is his right as an American citizen. That's his right. But yet he didn't get the opportunity to do it in New York. And Joy Reid is telling you why. Well, because it's Democrat run. 
Well, Democrats run it, so they didn't allow Trump to make sure that the trial was fair before going to trial. They didn't give Trump the opportunity to make sure that this was being done correctly, right? They allowed the trial to be fast-tracked in order to get the goal accomplished, which was to have Trump convicted of something, anything, before the election in order to affect the outcome of the election, right? That, that's essentially the argument that she's making. And I don't even think she realizes that. Because if you look at what happened in New York, almost every single one of Trump's appeals, whether that be to move the venue, whether that be to revisit uh, whether or not Judge Merchant should recuse himself because of his conflicts of interest, obvious conflicts of interest. Anything that Trump could have did in order to delay the trial was all rejected in New York. Again, couldn't even get the trial venue moved to a different county where he may have had a more fair jury, right? Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Now, again, in all his other cases, whether that be the Fannie Willis case in Georgia, the classified documents case in Florida, the Jack Smith case, even in D.C., Trump and his appeals were successful. Him trying to make sure he actually gets a fair trial was thoroughly or is thoroughly being looked at currently. Thoroughly being looked at before the trial starts. The due diligence is being done. But in New York, that didn't happen. They fast-tracked it. They fast-tracked it. And, and this is what Joy Reid is admitting out loud. That yeah, 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 yeah. This was only done because it was a blue state. A blue state. It's political. Right? This is what she's saying. Again, it's amazing. These people say the quiet part out loud, but Joy Reid is too dumb to realize that she's contradicting herself. But it's okay. Because just like they know that it's rigged because it happened in New York, they know that Trump didn't have a fair shot. Uh, normal, everyday people also know that it was rigged and Trump didn't have a fair shot. And in my opinion, I think this is why it's going to backfire because hopefully normal, everyday Americans can see through this political persecution you know he was not a well-liked person or candidate in new york so he i didn't think he was going to get any kind of a fair shake anyhow so he you know it is what it is it probably is going to affect the uh presidential race you know i'm sure he's still going to continue i'm sure joe is joe biden's happy that this happened and they'll but i do feel like that that will be overturned um whether or not you know, um, it is whether or not some of the convictions will stand. I guess that's to be seen later. But I do feel like this is a kind of a it's kind of out there and it's just kind of obvious to most people. I think um, if you just really kind of take off your rose colored glasses and see what's going on here. Some of them just didn't make sense. I think the evidence that they found as well just didn't make sense at all. I don't think it was morally ethical to for their verdict, but yeah, I'm excited to still vote for him and still support him. Defying business records, but a lot of voters I spoke to today say that this doesn't impact their vote and they don't think it will impact the election. You think this will affect his candidacy for president at all? I don't think so. I think if anything, he might get more votes. And why do you think so? Because they're afraid of him for a reason. He's for the country. He wants to make us great again. Season others were pretty surprised when we shared with them that the former president has been convicted on those 34 accounts. Some of them finding out for it the first time. Now, one man who just finished up a bike ride, he's actually here still on scene. He shared how he thinks the former president will get off with a appeals ruling, but others criticize how a convicted felon cannot vote in this election, but can still manage to run for president. Then I just finished speaking with uh, one gentleman named uh, Davin Daughtry, who lives here in Holly Springs. Uh, he shares how the criminal record holds no bearing and how he would vote in the general election. When people get a criminal record and, you know, you get caught in the system or whatever happens, they feel like their life is over. So that, that just shows this opportunity that you're able to still run and do something big as that. you feel when you read the verdict on your phone? It was a surprise, definitely. Uh, I live in, in Mexico. And most of my friends, most of the people I know, and most of my uh, customers in, let's say, California, 
which is, by the way, a very democratic state, are all Trump supporters. So uh, it was a surprise, yes. But then at the same time, I think it's going to be more uh, publicity for, for Trump campaign. Yeah, so let's hope and pray that the normal everyday American that actually understands what is happening to our country right now, like this is going to become the norm if Democrats are allowed to get away with this. Hopefully people understand that, hey, you got to go out there and you have to vote against the weaponization of the justice system to go after uh, people who don't fall in line with the establishment, political outsiders, okay? That is what is happening. And this is something that's, going to become a lot more commonplace if they're allowed to get away with it. And that's why it's so important that people show up and they vote to protect our Republic come this November, because it's not over yet. Again, the real verdict is on election day before that Trump will appeal and you know, he will take advantage of his rights. Okay. As an American citizen in order to try to get this uh, judgment overturned, this verdict overturned, which will probably be successful. That's the crazy part about it, right? That's the sad part. Okay. We know it was rigged to have him convicted. Again, there's so many problems with this case. There's so many issues with this case that yeah, likely it's probably going to be overturned, especially if it goes all the way up to the Supreme court. Um, and again, that's the sad part because, you know, by the time that happens, the election will be done with, right? It'd be over. But again, Democrats don't care. This is what they want. They just want to make sure that Trump does not become president of the United States again. And that is why it is super important that Trump does become president of the United States again, because that will show the Democrats that the American people will not stand for this type of authoritarianism that has taken over the Democrat party and taken over this country. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.